to face or not to face? Meh, it depends. Hey folks, we're back again with another video, and this is a continuation of our new frame build series, and today we are going to be installing headset cups. So, this is an easy job, but ultimately there are some details that you need to know about prior to installing it. There's two things that I want to go over. One is identification, and two, which is probably the most important one, should you face your headset, all right? So first let's go over identification. Chances are if you have a mountain bike, that mountain bike's headset is based off the standard headset identification system, S-H-I-S. -S. Yeah, standard headset identification system. I'm amazed I remember that. So essentially it's it was a really good system that they put together in order to be able to identify the different types of headsets. And there's basically three kinds, right? One of them is an external cup, meaning that even though a cup gets pressed into the frame, the actual cup that holds the bearings sticks outside of the frames, right? So that was one of the original ones. And then they came up with zero stack, which is what this one is. In other words, there is a cup, it presses into the frame, but you do not see the cup. You only see the rim of the cup. And the third one is integrated stack. That's like I have on my fat bike. There is no cup. It's all essentially molded into the actual frame. So you don't need a cup. Eh, you save some weight. My favorite personally is zero stack. Ultimately, I think that there's chances where, like I look at my fat bike, you can run into some complications when it comes to those integrated headsets. Zero stack to me sort of satisfies all needs and gives you the ability to well, replace something, right? Without having to replace an entire frame. So the other one you need to know about is the sizing. Now for the last, I don't know, I'd say 30 years, again, ignoring all the older standards, one inch, one and a quarter inch, we've been pretty much on a standard with mountain bikes of one and one eighth inch. So you have a straight tube that's one and one eighth inch or something like this, which is you know, been standard in my opinion, I think for the last probably 12 years at least. Oh, we're 2024, maybe closer to the last 15 years. Man, time goes by. Where it's a tapered headset where you have one and one eighth on top and one and a half on the bottom, right? So you need to make sure that when you buy your headset that it is built for the head tube that you have on your bike. And then comes the next question should I face my headset or not, right? So from a manufacturing perspective, there's actually a really good chance that these two surfaces, the top and bottom, won't be perfectly parallel with each other. Can that cause problems? Yeah, actually you can get creaking. I mean, it could be a bit of an issue depending on how bad it is. Now, can you fix that problem? If it's a metal frame, no problem at all. You get a facing die just like this one, and then you could safely face it. You could also ream it to make sure that your bearings are sitting perfectly flat and that your headset cups are perfectly flat or that your headset cups are perfectly flat to each other, right? If it's a carbon frame, one, I would not use metal bits on carbon frames, right? First, ask the manufacturer if you have a carbon frame. If your carbon frame is off to a point where it is noticeable, I would just return the frame, plain and simple. There's no reason for you to keep that frame. Ultimately, I wouldn't even go to a bike shop to fix, to face a carbon frame because chances are most of them are gonna try and use a metal tool like this and ultimately that could be an extremely bad thing, right? Carbon needs to be faced and cut with a diamond tool. Can you do it with this tool? Sure. Do you run a high risk of damaging something? Absolutely. One, you'll grind your tool real bad because carbon is extremely aggressive on these tools. And two, you take a chance of actually digging into a carbon, an actual fiber, and then you're gonna have yourself big problems, right? So you want to avoid it. I'm not gonna say that chances are they're gonna be perfect coming from carbon manufacturers. I would probably say that as far as perfect goes, 99% of them probably aren't perfect but chances are they will be good enough where it won't 
impact you in the long run, all right? So when it comes to carbon frames, I honestly, I just don't think it's worth actually doing it. If I ever come across diamond bits, I might just buy one just so I can have them handy, but they're stupid expensive. They're very hard to find. Replacing them is probably even more expensive, and I just don't think it's worthwhile, right? I haven't had any significant issues to a point where it would actually need it on a carbon frame. Metal frames, completely different story, just like bottom brackets and just like brake mounts, metal frames, super easy to face. And I highly recommend you do it without a doubt. And then you go to a regular bike shop. But when it comes to carbon frames, I would stay away. Since we're on it, when it comes to brake mounts, I feel the same way. If you're running into rub issues that you just cannot solve, chances are your mounts aren't flat to each other, right? If it's a metal frame, yeah, there's tools out there, stupid expensive, that you can't flatten these out to match. But ultimately, that's what conical washers come in for, right? These little guys over here, they literally allow you to position a caliper in the right spot where you get proper clearance between your brake pads on each side evenly across the brake pads. So you could either go buy a four, five, six hundred, or the good ones are a thousand plus tool to actually face that, or you can spend a couple of cents on conical washers and get this job done, all right? So with that being said, let's go into the uh, tools and parts needed for the job. As for tools, you don't need all these tools. For starters, for years, I used a tool that was similar to this one over here, right? This is a wheels manufacturing tool, super, super solid, very well made but really it's not needed. It's not all that expensive. You could find them with good discounts for decent prices actually. So personally, it is sort of worth it, but there is a limitation that we will go over in a minute. All you really need is a threaded rod, either three eighths or one half inch like this one, right? And then washers and a nut. But do not make the mistake of not using enough washers. Don't cheap out on the washers. You could build this tool basically for the better part of 15 bucks, but the washers is key. What you're trying to do with these washers is essentially build something as stable as this, not as thick, but as stable. And you do not want to use just the nut on a large washer, okay? It is not going to compress evenly across your whole headset. It actually might want to, it will sink in and that's going to give you big problems, especially if your headset started going in. You're going to have to remove it at that point, right? So the goal is to use multiple washers of each size. I would use a minimum of two of these small thick ones and then step up to the medium size and use again another two, if not three, depending on how thick you could get them. And then these ones over here, they're hard to get thick. I don't know, you can't, I haven't really found them thick at your hardware stores, but ultimately I would get minimum four, if not five for each side, not just for one side. These are cheap, okay? They're not expensive, so don't skimp out. And then you put your nut on top and then you're able to use your wrench to screw it down and compress everything in order for your headset to go in more safely. Again, we need to make sure that none of this flexes when we're putting in the headset, all right? I know you could get away with it, but ultimately it is not worth the extra few cents it costs for a bunch of, bunch of washers. As for the differences between these tools, again, this is the wheels manufacturing, great tool, super solid, but it has one limitation, and that is these handles. With some frames, you won't come across this often, but you can come across this, uh, this handle is gonna be too long. It's too straight, too long, and it could actually bump into the actual frame before you're done, okay? So uh, you have these styles, the Y styles, right? That avoids the issue of running into the frame. Now you got two of them over here. This is a U Noir, uh, super solid, super tool, very easy to use, very well thought out. It's just more expensive, right? They're not cheap. If you do multiples, or if you know you're gonna be doing this on and off uh, over your life, basically you can put the money into that. Or you could save a significant amount of money and getting one of these. There's multiple brands of these, like this is a foundation, but ultimately there's like different versions that comes off the exact same factory basically, right? With different names on it. Great tool, super solid, no questions asked. This thing's heavy. I love the fact that the handles are removable because it makes it super easy to store, but this has two issues with it when it compared to this one. One is the head. Look how much longer this is than this, than this one, right? 
Park Tools is the same thing. It's just as short as this one. It makes it much more finicky to install some cups on certain headsets. The other issue with this one, it's got a great removal tool, but drift is just a little bit too narrow. It should have been like even two more millimeters more in diameter when compared to this one and this one. This is basically the exact same diameter as the actual hole in the headset. You barely have any edge over here to grab, right? Whereas these over here, they're wider than the actual hole in the frame around the hole, basically. So that can be an issue. You gotta be extra careful, in other words. And that only matters when you're installing a one and a half bearing. So again, you can save some serious money. I got this one used literally. I think I paid 25 bucks for this when I bought something else from a guy who happened to have this so that he wanted to get rid of. So I said, why not? But I think brand new, these things go for like 50 bucks. As opposed to this one over here, it's gonna cost you, yeah, you could get them for 150, somewhere around there, depending on discounts. And this guy over here, you could get them again for about 100 bucks, depending on discounts, so on and so forth. But you could make this for 15 bucks, right? Just don't cheap out on the washers, like we said before. All right, let's get into the parts for the job. As for parts, well, we're gonna need a headset. I'm a huge fan of Cane Creek headsets. In my opinion, they make the best headsets. Chris King are great. I know a lot of people are gonna be like, oh, Chris King. They're great, I just find they're a little bit more finicky to service those bearings than it is with these guys. And these bearings last real, real long, right? So this is a Cane Creek 110, my preference. I know it costs a little bit more, but ultimately I think it has a great cup. And I love the stainless steel bearings on these guys. And ultimately I absolutely love the race. This is the best race out there in my opinion. No matter what you have, get this concrete race. You can buy them 10 bucks. You can even buy them less than that with a 20% discount, worst case scenario. Just get this thing. This is the best. I've seen many, many, I've taken apart many forks from frames. This is the only race that allows the least or allows the least amount, if that's even the way to say it, of dirt to get anywhere near that bottom bearing. And every other, I've seen entire bearings fall apart when taking out the fork from the bike, right? So this headset, this race over here, the best they sell them independently go buy one in my opinion and again stainless steel i'm not going to go over assembling the actual headset that's going to be in a different video when we go over installing the shock the fork i mean but ultimately what we are going to be installing over here are the cups i am going to go over again in another video installing the whole headset with the fork because i want to make sure people understand a couple of big mistakes in my opinion that people make out there when installing them to make sure that you don't make those same mistakes all right and you will be needing grease for this job so let's install these cups so before i actually install the cups i just wanted to show you the difference as far as the unoir tool or the new noir tool and that cheaper version of that tool right Again, the Unoir tool, the drift is much larger for the one and a half millimeter. You got, you actually got a few millimeters around the outside, right, of the actual cup itself, which is just more of a comfortable feel. Whereas this one, it's really nice that it has a step, right? And it locks into that step real nice, but man, it's actually smaller than the actual cup. Now, you're gonna be pressing at the base of the cup, but still, I just feel more comfortable knowing that it would be a little bit larger in order to just cover more area, right? So, uh, pers I mean, like I said, this will work, guys. This will work. You could save a lot of money by going with that, you know, third-party aftermarket, multi-name brand tool out there that's just as solid, but it has those two limitations. One, the stem on the handle. Two, this is just a little bit smaller than what it, sh it should have been. They should have made it like literally two more millimeters, if not three more millimeters larger in diameter, all right? I swear the stuff that could happen sometimes when making these videos could just drive a person nuts. I had finished recording the entire install and then I went to review it on the GoPro and like a bonehead, I actually hit the delete button when I was done with reviewing it. And now I'm back to starting from scratch. So I literally had to go back and knock out the bottom cup in order to be able to create this video. I'm not gonna knock out both cups. Ultimately, the top cup's gonna be the same install process as the bottom cup, all right? So let's do this again. Bottom cup, the first thing we need to do is grease the outside of it. We're gonna put a good amount of grease on the outside, if you guys could see that, right? 
Make sure the whole thing's covered nicely all the way around. Next, we want to make sure the inside is clean. So we're going to take some alcohol on a rag and just make sure that everything is nice and clean. All right, now we're going to take our tool. Now with the tool, make sure you give yourself enough room to press down, right? So don't forget to do that or else you're just going to have to, you're not going to be able to compress it all the way. So since we already have our top cup, well, it doesn't really matter if you have your top cup on or off, we center the tool. Then we take our cup, our bottom cup. Now this one has an emblem. I want that emblem to face the front, right? I want it to be centered, this little lizard over here. So we're gonna put this guy in and then we're gonna put in our drift. All right, now we're gonna take our drift and we're gonna put it as high as we can. In fact, I think I might be able to go a little bit. Is that it? Did it snap in? Yep, it snapped in right there, okay? So now what I wanna make sure is that my emblem is perfectly centered, right? Which should be somewhere around there for now. Now I'm gonna take up some of the slack. Make sure you always have your emblem centered. There should be a line that gives you an idea as far as where the center is, which is right there. Now, before you start compressing in there, make sure you are perfectly even all the way around, all right? So my line is centered from what I see. Now it's starting to get hard. And I start compressing. Easy peasy. Now, don't over tighten. We just want a nice snug, a solid snug feel. We look around, we make sure there is no space. Little bit more and done. Take out my drift, take out the top part, inspect it, put your fingernail in between, make sure that there is no space. There's absolutely no space. And that is, oops, and that is it. We just installed the bottom cup. The top cup would be the exact same process. Again, I'm not gonna remove it. It's just pointless, right? It's the exact same process. In fact, the bottom cup needs a little bit more attention typically than the top cup, unless your top cup has an emblem that you wanna align as well. Typically they won't and you just press them in, all right? As far as assembling the rest of the headset, that's gonna be a different video. When I put the shock on here and I cut the steer tube or the fork on here and I cut the steer tube and assemble the whole thing, we're gonna go over that separately because during that process, there's a couple of mistakes, big mistakes that people make in my opinion that I definitely wanna go over with you guys to make sure that you don't do those two same mistakes, all right? And that's pretty much it guys, that's the whole video, how to install cups in a headset. If this video was helpful and you liked it, please click the like button, guys. It would be super appreciated. Click the subscribe button to see more videos. Click the bell button, bing, 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 in order to get notified when new videos get released and more videos are coming. So until then, I hope all is well with all of you, and we will be talking to you soon. All right, have a good one. Take care. Bye.